Hi, I'm Bill and welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, you might want to take a look at this video, Astro Vagabond Channel. Introduction start here. It will help set your expectation about the channel, why I'm doing it, who I am, where I live, and also that from time to time my speech is a little bit slow and I may start using filler words like um and ah. And uh, I always try to keep those to a minimum, but I know it is off-putting for some people, so uh, you've been warned. And this, uh, but it's a good video to give you an overview of what you might gonna find here. So tonight, the purpose of this video is to talk about why I decided to get a field flattener and um, a little bit about having introduced. A new optic into my image train how I have to address what's called back focus also a viewer of one of my other videos asked the question a viewer named Arpan is it a requirement to have a field flattener my response was I don't know but again I'm a beginner thinking about it I don't know why you would need to have one necessarily and if you didn't want to spend the money and your images were turning out acceptable to you, well then, uh, fantastic. Uh, but I, I made the decision knowing that I could experience field curvature aberration and that a field flattener would help address that condition. I decided to spend the $200 up front uh, and incorporate an adjustable field flattener into my uh, system. And again, what I have here is a Zenith Star uh, 61, a Z61 Mod 2 telescope. I have a William Optics Z61A adjustable field flattener. I have a William Optics 48 millimeter T adapter that lets me attach my Canon 6D. And this Canon 6D is not astro modified and maybe I'll do a future uh, video on what that means. So this is the basic rig that I have to work with. Why did I decide to go with a field flattener? Well, there's this condition called field curvature aberration, and it has to do with how light arrives at your sensor based upon what axis it is on when it arrives. It may or may not focus on the focal plane of your imaging sensor in your camera. It may focus on a focal plane that's not on the image, uh, on the, the same focal plane as your, as your sensor. This is a uh, representation of that uh, aberration. I found this on the Edmund Optic site, it's something you might want to check out. A lot of good information in there about different types of aberrations. Uh, I know very little as a beginner about lens design and a lot of things that uh, make a telescope what it is. I made a decision to purchase this William Optic Zenith Star uh, 61 Mod 2 and it is a doublet refracting telescope and through its use I will learn the up the pluses and the minuses I imagine of uh, my decision to purchase but you had to start I had to start somewhere so this is what I purchased also the University of Texas El Paso has a nice graphic that shows what happens when light is passing through the optical systems uh, of your telescope and any other optical elements you may have uh, in your uh, in your telescope and again it shows this curved image plane and my understanding is this field flattener is designed to help eliminate that aberration so I decided to buy the William Optics adjustable field flattener. It was $200. It's designed to pair with the William Optics Zenith Star 61 Mod 2 uh, telescope. 
and I'm just going to scroll down the page a little bit. It's, uh, if you choose to get one, uh, a lot of great instruction is on this page. This is what I use to incorporate the field flattener into my image train. Um, shows the different parts, different thread sizes, how the pieces go together. Uh, very helpful, allowed me to do it. Starts to go in a little bit about how to adjust the distance, how to make the adjustments on this field flattener. I'll come back to that later. It also identifies, which I didn't really know at the time of the purchase, it has the ability to support an optical filter. Uh, I understand a two inch diameter optical filter. And here is a depiction of that, of a filter uh, on the, uh, the field flattener. So that is something that maybe I will use uh, down the road, although I did uh, get a different uh, light pollution uh, filter for my Canon 60. So worthwhile to take a look at it. But what has happened is I've incorporated a new optical element in my image train. And so there's this principle called back focus. And if I just had the camera with the mounting ring attached directly to the telescope, uh, let's, we'll scroll down a little bit to this image. My, my back focus, as I understand it, would essentially be set for me. Uh, 55 millimeters, I guess, is kind of the industry standard with the uh, T-adapter uh, and my camera. My understanding is I'd be pretty much set. Not much I had to do. I can't move the camera forward or back unless I put spacers in. But my understanding is uh, I would be good. But I made the decision to put this... Uh, additional optical element in. So now I have to address that. Fortunately, William Optics provides some information on the new back focus distance I need to achieve. So in this box down here, you see the Z61, which was this scope. And, uh, but this is where I'm trying to resolve. This Here's where my conflict is. I see dimension A, and I see dimension B. One is 67.7 millimeters, the other one is 69.2. I know that these lines show where they're taking the measurement from. I just don't really know where that is on this uh, adapter, this adjustable field flattener. So that's something I have to sort out. For right now, I am going to say the new back focus that I have to achieve is 67.7. That may not be correct, uh, but that's going to be my starting point. And the reason I'm starting there is the standard back focus is 55 millimeters. And then when I look at this, um, this uh, image on the William Optics page, I see they're calling out a 12.9 millimeter adjustment on the same field flattener that I purchased. So if I add that 12.9 to the uh, 55, it gets me close to the 67. And, and I think what's actually happening here is I saw another image um, where actually with the T adapter to your image sensor is 54.8. And so anyway, I'm going to go initially with a 67.7 millimeter back focus, adjusting my Z61 adjustable field flattener to 12.9 millimeter. And that's going to be my starting point. So if you have more experience than me, you've done this before, and you can help sort out whether it's the 67.7 by setting it at 12.9 on here, or if it's some different number, uh, feel free to put that information into the comments, uh, and that will be uh, very helpful. So, I guess kind of in closing, I wanted to answer the question of ARPON. 
is a field flattener uh, required when you're imaging? Again, uh, I don't know. I imagine you can do it without it. Uh, I decided to add it in, but with adding a new optical element into my imaging train, I now have to set the right back focus. I believe I need to set it at 12.9, uh, adjust the uh, adjustable field flattener to 12.9, and then that puts me at a starting point of 67.7 as my new back focus, uh, but we're going to see. And again, as much as I like to have people uh, give me the answers that I'm looking for. Uh, it's also fun sometimes to do my own research, do some trial and error, and see for myself uh, uh, whether or not my starting point of 67.7 is, is correct. You know, I, I think when you're a beginner, a lot of times, if it's not costing you any significant money, a little bit of trial and error, error uh, you know, a little trial and error, uh, work uh, can get you to your answer. Uh, of course, you can always go to the forums and probably get the, uh, the answer directly. So um, that's all I really wanted to share tonight. Uh, right now we got a lot of rain here and I'm still a week or so away from starting data acquisition. What I'm trying to do, I'm considering this my checkout phase. I'm trying to understand uh, the building blocks of getting my telescope and imaging train and camera ready for data acquisition. And I want to make sure I understand the fundamentals of each of the things I need to do uh, to properly prepare it for uh, the start of data acquisition. If you like this kind of content, please give it a thumbs up. As always, I welcome new subscribers. If you gain some insight from uh, what I shared tonight here as far as what I'm trying to understand and what I'm working on right now, uh, that's fantastic. If you're more experienced and you want to help educate me further, please take time to put uh, some information in the comments. What really drives a YouTube channel, I learned from the other channel my wife and I have, is the comments and the questions. Um, those comments and questions can really help me and other beginners that may be viewing this channel and reading the comments get up the learning curve a lot more quickly. And in absence of them, of them though, I just need to do some more research. And there's plenty of uh, resources out there like forums and YouTube uh, uh, to help me do it. So thank you for dropping in to the channel. Till next time.